So I just did a video on what I'm calling the senior developer workflow or really just iterative development. And a lot of the questions that I got back were around how does this apply to TDD? Now, I love TDD or test-driven development, so <laughs> I'm happy to answer those questions. And I kind of want to set it up by thinking about TDD as how you're going to write the best code of your life, because it's actually going to get you there. But it's kind of like those cooking videos where all the ingredients are just laid out just so, and it's perfect. And you're like, well, why don't I cook more often that way with all the ingredients kind of laid out and just perfectly proportioned and all that. And that's a really good question. So what I'm gonna do in this video is start off by introducing TDD and show you how it's gonna help you write some just superb quality code. And then I'm gonna cover why I don't use it as often as I should. So let's jump over into the office and check out what TDD is. Okay, we're over in the office and I'm going to use my MPX Create MF app to create a library. So we're going to create a library called my library. And I'm going to use the library setup and that's going to give us my library. So let's jump on in there and then I'm going to do VS code. And so this is just a simple TypeScript library. So I'm, to this, we're going to go and set up our testing systems. So, so to this, I'm going to add jest, ts jest, which is for TypeScript jest, and then the types for jest, which gets it talking to TypeScript. Now, the next thing I need to do is configure jest for TypeScript. So the way that I do that is to use mpx and then use that ts jest command and give it the config init. And this is just going to go and automatically create a configuration for us. So we're pretty much good to test at this point. So I'm going to go over to my source directory. And currently, I've got an index.ts that has some code in it. We're going to get rid of that code. Don't need that anymore. OK, now into this directory, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call that sumclamp.spec.ts. So that's going to have our tests in it. And I'm going to describe a new function. We're going to call it sum and clamp. And in there, we're going to have a bunch of tests. So we're going to say that it should sum up to zero. And we're just going to have it sum an array of numbers. So we're going to expect that sum clamp, if we give it an empty array, and then start it off at 10, we're going to expect that to be zero. We're going to expect the result of that to be the number is zero. And let's also say that uh, we're going to expect that if we add negative one and one, we're going to also get zero. So what this is going to do is basically just sum up all of the numbers in the array. And then if it exceeds this clamping number, it'll clamp down the number to that. And then let's see, so jump to zero from some numbers. So we've got enough to actually start out with, right? This is our API contract that we want. We want this sum clamp. So let's go and build that out. So I'm going to go back over here to our files and I'm going to create a new file called sumclamp.ts. And in there, I'm just going to export a function. We'll call it sumclamp. And we expect that it's going to take some numbers, which is an array of numbers and a clamping value, which is just a number and it's going to return a number. And right now I'm just going to return zero, you know, because I, honestly that is what it expects. So I've only given it some tests that return zero. So just returning zero is enough. And that's actually one of the principles here. You actually want to write just enough code to get all of the tests to run and no more. So how am I going to get this to run? Well, I'm going to use an extension called Wallaby. And what Wallaby does is it actually runs all of the tests as you type. So it's going to add a lot of stuff up here around debugging and focus. But basically what it's saying is, OK, this describe is cool. We're getting a green box here. And that basically says it. everything's cool with that. But these ones aren't working. And why aren't they working? What well, actually tells you some clamp is not defined. OK, great. So let's go and define some clamp by importing it. So I'm going to bring in some clamp from our some clamp file. And when you know it, this is awesome. So now these are actually starting to run. So we've got zero coming out of some clamp. But let's actually give it some numbers and expect it to sum up. So I'm going to say should sum some numbers. And we're going to give it, let's see, one, two, three, four. And our clamp is going to be 20. 
But if we sum up 1, 2, and 3, and 4, then we expect that value to be 10, right? Because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, last time I checked. So let's see that now, oh, yep. So if we scroll over here, we expected the value to be 10, and we got 0. So let's now go back over and implement some clamp. And then I'm going to take the numbers, and I'm going to reduce them to create a sum. And I'm going to take each number as I go and then add it to that sum and start off with 0. So let's see. Does that work? OK, let's go back over our spec. And yes, it does. That's awesome. But let's see, it probably doesn't clamp it. So if I want to say, should some some numbers and then clamp. And I'm going to clamp it to five. And expect that the value coming out is five. Oh, there you go. So another broken test. So we expected that we would get five, but we got 10 back. So now let's go over and write the code to make sure that that works. So we are going to give a math.min and take the sum and take the clamp and whichever is the smaller, we'll take that. So let's see, we'll just take a math.min of numbers and the clamp. I think it should be working and cool. And now we can see that all four of these tests pass. Now, if you don't have Wallaby, so what would you do? So I'm gonna go over here to our package JSON and I'm gonna add a script for test. And I'm going to set that to be jest. And then I'll go back into our terminal. And then I'm going to run that test on there. And when you know it, everything passes. Everything's great. Cool. So now this is obviously pretty simple. So the next thing I want to do is actually try out using this technique when it comes to building React hooks and see if we can do something that's a bit more complex, at least in terms of how it works within the ecosystem. But before you get there, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new one of these comes out. Okay, so let's uh, close out some of these. And what we need to do to get going on this is we actually need to add a few things to enable us to do React testing. So, of course, number one would be we need to do React. So let's go and add in React and React DOM. And then I'm going to add the testing library for React hooks. So this is a testing library that's specific to React hooks that basically simulates the hook environment and makes it easy to test hooks. Add that. And the last thing I need to do is change our JS configuration so that instead of testing in Node, it tests in JS DOM. And the reason for that is that we are actually going to be simulating the DOM here for these React hooks. Okay, so we're going to create a hook called use sum, and it's going to be pretty simple. It's basically just going to have some state in it. That state's going to be probably an array of numbers. We're going to add numbers to that array, and then it's going to automatically sum it for us. So I'll create a file here called use sum. And we want to start with our spec, right? So we're going to do spec.ts. And I'm going to bring in render hook and act from the React hooks starting library. So render hook basically allows us to render a hook and act allows us to call any callbacks on that hook. So I'm going to describe use sum as a set of tests here. And I'm going to say it should start with zero. So currently it's fine, right? So the first thing we need to do is render the hook. So I'm going to use render hook here, and it's going to just take a function that then returns use sum, which is not defined anywhere yet. So that, that's okay. But then we get back the result. What's the result of calling that hook? So we're going to run some expectations on that, and we expect the, sure, the result current sum to be zero. So we have some summing, and we expect that to be zero. Okay, so now we've actually got to go and create our hook. So let's go back over to our project. And I'm going to create a new file called use sum.ts. I'm just going to create the simplest possible function I can. So I'm going to say export a function, call it use sum. And then all it's going to do is just return a sum that starts at zero. Because that's going to make our test work. That's all it's looking for. So let's go back over into here and we'll say import use sum from use sum. And now our test is passing. Pretty cool. OK, great. But of course, that's not what we really want. So what we want is we want to be able to add a number to it. Should sum up a number. And so to do that, we need to use this act function. So once that hook has been created, we need to act on it. So I'm going to say act. And then I'm going to give it callback. And then I'm going to use with GitHub CLI suggestion here, which is to say current add 
and we'll add 10. And then we expect the sum to be 10. Okay, so currently it's telling us we have no add function, right? Add is not a function because we didn't return one. So it's not even getting to the point where it's actually going to test. So let's go back over here and we're going to add our adder. So what are we going to do with that? Well, let's go and create some state. So I'm going to go and bring in use state from React. And I'll go and create a value here. Since that's all we need, we just need a single value. And I'm going to turn that value. It starts off at zero. That's fine. And then I'm going to set that value right here. I'm just going to call set value. And let's see, does that work? Yes, that works just fine. Awesome. Because this add is taking a value and then setting that value and then returning that value over here. And of course, we only have the one value. So there you go. But of course, that's not what we want. We want it to have multiple ads and support multiple ads. And then we get the number that's the sum of all those. So we'll add now 20 at this point, And we can see that we get an error. We expected to see 10 and we got 20. Well, what we really want is 30. So that's not good in either case. So now we're expecting 30 and we got 20 because 20 is the last thing along the line. So our code is not doing what we expected to do. So let's go, go back over here. And instead of a value, we'll call this numbers and then set numbers. And then we're going to have a, an array of numbers as our state. And so what do we do here? Well, our sum, we want to use a memo for that. So let's see, use memo. And I'm going to use the GitHub CLI suggestion here, which is to use that reducer with A, B, and then add A to B. And we will change if numbers ever changes. All right, that looks pretty good. But now we need to go and set the numbers. So we'll use a callback for that. So I'll call, use callback here. I'll drop that in there. And that's going to take a value, which is a number. And then I'm going to set those numbers to be all the current numbers plus the new value. And I'm going to recalculate this callback whenever numbers changes so that we don't have a stale closure. Put in numbers there and we should be good. Let's give it a try. Like we're seeing green across the board over here. That's real good. Let's go over here. We're seeing green across the board. Excellent. We have a pretty solid sense that we're actually going to pass our test if we run it, but let's do that just in case. So yarn test again. And now everything's running just fine. Awesome. Cool. So that worked well for hooks and I'm very confident now in our use some hook, but does it work for UI components? And that was a question that I got asked when it came to the comments in the last video. And I think that's actually kind of interesting. So let's, let's try it out. Let's see if we like how this works when it comes to testing React components. So I'm going to close out these files and down in the console, I'm going to add the testing library for just DOM. And that's going to allow us to test out the results of DOM manipulations from React, like whether an item has a content or not, and then bring in the React testing library, which is a very popular testing library for React. And then the only other tweak we need to make to this project is you need to go over that TS config file and make sure that it is outputting the correct JSX. So we're going to say that that's React. And now we're going to start creating out our tests. So I'm going to create a new file in source and we're going to call it my dialogue spec.tsx. We have to use TSX because in this case we're going to use JSX. So we're going to bring in React and also render and screen from the testing library. That's going to allow us to render that React component and then screen's going to allow us to go test it. And then these testing extensions on expect allow us to go and do things like check for text content and our little dialogue. We're just going to go and make sure that it allows us to put in children and get the text content out as it wraps the children in a dialogue. It's pretty simple stuff. So I'm going to say, first off, describe my dialogue. And then I'm going to say it should wrap child text. So GitHub Copilot has actually given us some pretty cool stuff here. So we're going to say my dialogue, we're going to put in hello, and we're not going to get by text. We're going to say get by role. And we're going to see what roles we have. We have text box. So 
wrap the content in a text box. And yeah, we'll say to have text content. And that text content is going to be that hello that we put in there. So we're going to expect it to actually return that. So now Wallaby is reporting pretty much green across the board, except that when we get down here to my dialogue, well, my dialogue isn't defined. So of course we need to go define that. So let's go and jump back here to source. And then I'm going to add another file called my dialogue dot TSX. And into that, I'm going to import react from react. And then I'm going to create my dialogue. And it's going to be a react function component. And it's going to take children. And then it's going to wrap those in a div. Okay, so that works. It's all type safe. But of course, I have to export that. Looking pretty good. Let's go back over to our spec and import that from my dialog. And it should get a little bit further. So now where does it get to? Well, it gets down here, unable to find an accessible element with the role text box. Fair enough. So let's go back over to my dialog and then do role equals text box. And now we've got greens across the board here. That's looking pretty good. Got greens across the board pretty good there too. And let's run our test. And there we go. Everything's passing across the board, including our new React component, which we pretty much knew already because of Wallaby giving us some hinting as we were typing. So that's awesome. Now, would I do this for my components? Yes, actually I would. But there is a caveat here. I would use the testing library and I would test them exactly like I would components that I was testing later on, which is to say, I wouldn't be using snapshot testing. I would be using the testing library to specifically call out the tests that I cared about. In this case, I really care that the text here, hello, is, is wrapped and present in that dialogue. I don't care necessarily about any classes or anything like that. And that would be the kind of stuff that would be picked up by a snapshot that to me is insignificant. So, well, at least in this case is insignificant. I'm sure that in lots of cases you care about the classes passionately. I'm not saying anything like that, but of course, in this case, all I care about is whether hello is wrapped. And so I'm going to be testing specifically for that. So I'd say yes, absolutely TDD your components, but no, don't TDD them with snapshotting because you basically have to write the snapshots, which is pretty crazy. All right, well, we've had a chance to look at TDD and now we get to ask ourselves, well, why don't we use that as much as we should? And I'm asked myself that a lot. And I think it's because of the nature of the projects that I'm on and the type of code that I write. A lot of the time I'm on POC projects where I'm just kind of throwing things together just to see if it's going to work in the first place. And then it's a question of kind of cleaning up and making it production worthy later. And there's really just not a lot of time for testing in that model. So I don't test much at all, if any, which is not great to admit, but that's just the reality of things. And then in other times I'm working on an existing code base. And sometimes that has unit tests and sometimes that doesn't have any unit tests at all. And so most of the unit testing is involved in upgrading the unit tests so that there are unit tests. And then as I code, yeah, there is an opportunity to do some TDD work there. The one time that I can really dig in and use TDD the way that I like to do it is when I'm building a new library with a new API and we kind of negotiate it ahead of time exactly what that API is going to look like. And so I can go and build out the test that test that API and then go and build out the code that implements it. And it just feels so good. So. I hope that this video encourages you to try that out for yourself. Go and build out an API that you think is interesting to you and use the TDD model to get there. Even if you don't use TDD on a daily basis, it's going to help you learn exactly how to code just in the best possible way you can. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you really did, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder video comes out.